Hello. Happy Tuesday. <laughs> it's Jan the Urban Gypsy Crochet, one half of Lancashire Crafty Lasses, here again. The reason why I'm here again is not that I've done any more crochet, but I thought I'd finished with my subscription to uh, Interweave Crochet. Apparently, I hadn't. Another one arrived this morning. So I thought, before I forget, I'll come on and show you. I'm still crocheting my sister-in-law's sweater. It is growing. It's actually quite sweet as it is, isn't it? You could, if you were nice and slender, you could wear that with a pair of shorts, trousers, skirt. You know, as it is. Well, with a bit of edging on it, of course. But... As I'm not young, slender or whatever, then <laughs> I shall carry on doing it for my sister-in-law. So as you can see, I've still got a bit more to do on the bodywork and then I've got the sleeves to do. Um, but it's coming up quite nicely. And uh, before you ask what am I wearing, here we go, I'll show you uh, sleeves. It's... Um, Crochet in the King Cole Riot uh, and it's from, once again, <laughs> guess which book it's from? It's from Everyday Crochet Book. It's, um, I think it's called Cinnabar, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there it is. It's called Cinnabar. As I said, I can't remember what colour it is, but it was the King Cole Riot. Yeah? Woohoo! Yeah. Oh, I'm covered in dog hair. It's just stopped raining. I'm getting really fed up with this weather. I'm waiting to take photographs of all these. I've got the purple one up, or the lilac one up at the moment, to put on those sh in the shop. Just can't get around to it because the weather's so appalling. Oh, what am I going to do? Anyway, excuse me. For those of you who follow me on Facebook on Urban Gypsy Crochet, I've put Kelly's latest video up there because she's shown all the things that she's just finished making. Little whirlwind she is, you know. Puts me in the shade, makes me feel as though I am such a slow crochet. And she's actually got a knitting pattern for a pair of socks, if you're in, interested in that. And she's got the PDF for that for sale. And she shows the socks on her video. Although she didn't find a sock block, as well. that's by the by. Anyway. So. She is still waiting for the surveyor bloke to come to sort out about the kitchen ceiling where she had the flood. Oh, I tell you, they don't do anything all round here. Don't do anything. Anyway, back to what I was going to do. Oh, I've got one little side note. Um, if, if you watch Z, Zelda and NRJ3, three, <coughs> excuse me, I did send her a, a parcel with three balls of uh, Bartik, Stylecraft Bartik yarn in it. Um, mainly because Z's been extremely good to me in the past. And sadly, I've not been able to, um, you know, give her anything back lately because you know financially and one thing and another but a lady has asked me would I send her two balls but I don't think she realizes just how much it costs I can't get to a workshop so I've got to pay postage for it to come to me and then I've got to um, obviously pay for the yarn and pay for the postage to go out to America and by the time we finish we're talking $46 just for two balls of wool so I don't think she realizes that so if anybody else is going to ask me to send them anything, you've got to realise, you know, you're going to be paying over the odds because I can't go in a shop and buy it. I've got to pay postage for it to come to me. Anyway, that's by the by. And sadly, I am not in a position of donating anything to anybody at the minute because, well, like everybody else in the world, just after Christmas, etc, etc, I'm broke. And... Um, I've got to pay for some paint and some curtains and you know the story, don't you? I'm not whinging. Nobody else's problem but mine. But I just thought I'd explain why I'm not in a position 
to send things to anybody, donate things to anybody, or do giveaways. But I'm sure you'll all understand. Anyway, back to what I was going to talk about before, which is the Interweave Crochet Magazine. And I actually like quite a few things in here. Um, I mean, if I, I wasn't going to renew my subscription, I thought it was already finished, but here we go. Got another magazine. And uh, this one is, so oh, goodness of me, don't know what number it is. Oh, Spring 2020. I mean, it's $8.99 and it's a slim little magazine, isn't it? You know, but there are a couple of nice things in this. And I know that Kelly will be interested in some of them. Um, Pale Shades seem to be in again this spring. And that is one of them, which is a very nice, well, it's like, a, I call them a stole. I don't call them a shawl because they're like a very long rectangle, aren't they? And uh, it's very, very dainty and very, very pretty. So let's go on with things. That's an advert for, it's called the Crochetist. Uh, Oh, you can download it on interweave.com, that pattern. It's not in the magazine. You have to download the pattern at interweave.com. It's a nice chunky sweater, isn't it, for the winter? Not even got summer yet, have we? And we're talking about winter already. Uh, an advert for the Yarn Fest in Loveland, CO, wherever that is. And uh, it's April 29th to May the 3rd. For anybody who might be in that area who wants to go. Right, here we go. Spring Terrace. That's actually like um, a shrug. There's another picture of the back view of it somewhere else. I've only had a skim through it, but it's, there's a picture of the back view. That's a very pretty, very, very pretty sort of spring summery type of shawl. Would be slightly better if she didn't have her hair hanging all down the back of it so we could actually see the design a bit better but hey i'm nitpicking there is um a geomet was it not geometric geometric some word or other they made up anyway it's the top <laughs> it's a shorty top i don't know where you can see it or not because it's actually in beige against a light background which you know is not very good for seeing detail and then there's another very pretty shawl there we go they all look as though they're done in quite fine yarn uh, the, the, jack, the sweater says blocks of treble crochet give an updated graphic look to this pullover the semi-open work crochet pattern allows the sweater to breathe while the cotton blend yarn gives substance. So it's done in Debbie Bliss Piper. The shawl is done in um, oh Paris Alpaca yarn. Sounds very posh, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> very posh. Right, let me turn a page. Can't turn pages without licking my fingers. It's my book. So if I've got coronavirus, I'll keep it to myself here. This one is called Apple Blossom Pullover. And it's done in a DMC yarn called Natura Just Cotton. Again, it looks fine, but it's very pretty, isn't it? Very pretty. And then there's another open work shawl, which is done in Sweet Georgia Party of Five Tough Look Socks Mini Skeins. It's called a Spring Rain Shawl. That's quite pretty. All right, if you've got mini skeins, which I don't. Um, this one is... Uh, I think it's a beret actually, it's like a slouch, oh they call it a tam, 
and mitts. Uh, I don't like, well, say I don't like the tabs. Somebody else may suit it, I wouldn't, but the long fingerless mitts are nice, aren't they? And then we've got, I think it's cross-stitched on top of the, the basic uh, sort of shawl, stole, whatever you want to call it. It looks like it's been cross-stitched, if you can see. It may be show you a bigger picture when we get further over. Right, that's the back view of the Bolero I first showed you. That's the back view of it. It's quite intricate at the back. But there's kind of not much at the front, if you know what I mean. Ooh, go that way, you can't see the instructions. Um, that's the, the pretty shawl. Very open work. That's a sort of better picture, I can get it, of that shorty top. Try my hardest not to show you any of the instructions. Don't want to be copyrighted and smacked on the hand, do I? Um, that's another shawl, which I'm going to try and show you just the picture. I'm really quite liking some of these in here. I have to borrow the book, <laughs> borrow the magazine. We do that, we do swap about. So you see something that I've got, you know, we borrow, we borrow patterns. Well, there's no point in buying two copies, is there? I know we're, well, we're not doing the designer out of the money, are we? No, we're not really, because we're not selling it to each other we're just borrowing it i'm sure that i'm sure there's a law against that but hey ho <laughs> that's the pink sweater there's a law against everything these days if you're not careful isn't there the spring rain shawl that's a picture of the of it all spread out whoops let me go the right way You just give a little woof there. That's a picture of the tam. If you can, oh, I'm going the wrong way. The tam and the mittens. It's very pretty, very nice design, but it's not something I would wear, but other people may. As I said before in my other video, I have got to stop thinking of things that I would wear. I've got to start thinking more in terms of what is fashionable and what would other people wear, yeah? Um, I think it looks like surface embroidery to me on that. I haven't read the pattern, obviously. But that's what it looks like to me. I don't know whether it gives you... Yeah, it is embroidery. It gives you a chart to do it with. I have done embroidery on certain things in the past, but not that. Right, that's a party block sweater. It's done partly in, oh, can't bend it enough. Partly in yellow, partly in grey colour. And then it's uh, cushions done in a block. Um, there's a bag, but I, I think I'd have to strengthen the handles. They look rather floppy, don't they, the handles on that. And then this, it looks quite a nice sweater, but sadly they've put it over a floral blouse. So it's kind of very meshy, the sweater. So I think it would look nicer with just a plain, plain tee or a plain vest top underneath it. I think that shirt's just too busy to put underneath it. Um, there's another bag. And then this is a throw, afghan, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
nicer with that. I think we're getting to. Oh, there's a better picture of that uh, yellow and grey top. Um, I think we're getting towards the end of it now. You see what I mean about that bag handle? It looks very flopsy, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's going to sort of be very droopy, I think, if you put anything in it. I think it would need strengthening in some way. Oh, you see, there's the back of that sweater. It does show it a little bit better, how open work it is. You know, you could see it better. It says she had a plain, plain sweater underneath it, a plain shirt underneath it. Alright, I think we're just onto the patterns now. Oh no, we've got some more here. Obviously, very pastels must be in this spring. There's another one. Does it say what that's done in? Oh, Manas del Uruguay, Fino. Um, Apparently it was in the winter 2008 edition in a plain colour, so they've done it again, but they've done it in a random shade. And this one is, I think this is the one on the front cover. Very delicate, very lacy. Oh, we've got the wrong way again. Very delicate. Just what you would want really for the spring, isn't it? Or the summer. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah. It's a nice big bag again. Now this one, I remember this one, this is a Doris Chan one and it's called the Serra Lace and I've actually made this one years ago, it was in another another book, it was in another interweave from many many years back and it was very nice when I made it, it's done in fine yarn and um, it's very nice and lacy so I've got that pattern twice if you know what I mean, but I don't know where it is it's like Kelly, she said, oh, I've just seen this lovely sweater pattern. And she sent me a picture of it and I went, I've got that pattern somewhere. <laughs> it's in an interweave pattern book, I'm sure it is, but I'd have to go up and have a, a good moochie moochie upstairs. I need to go through all my uh, magazine patterns and decide, you know, which ones have got things in that I like. And uh, put little markers on them, I'll put them all into one draw and put the others that I'm not so keen on in another draw. Um, because, you know, I sit there thinking, I've got a pattern for that, I've got a pattern that's very similar to that, but where? You know, and it, and it might be a brain goes, mm -hmm. so I need to spend, well, it'll be a whole day just going through them. Yeah, that's the pattern stitch of that Sarah sweater by Doris Chan. Very pretty. Again, being Doris Chan, it's top down. So, I think we've got to the end of what we've got to now. Yeah. Get four free Infinity Scarf patterns to be downloaded at interweave.com. So there you go, all get Googling for your interweave.coms. Yeah. So that's all really I've got to, to say. Except Kelly's made a video. Um, you need to take a look at that. Um, she's halfway, or she started doing a tutorial. She did tell me what she was making a tutorial of, but you know, <laughs> hello, brain fade. Um, you know, unlike me, she's willing to try making tutorials, whereas forget it with me because I'm hopeless. And. Um, I need to concentrate on taking photographs. See, the sun's out now, but it's still flipping me. I keep looking for these rainbows. They've got to be rainbows somewhere because it's raining and it's sunshine at the same time. But the weather, unfortunately, is rain for the rest of the week. So quite when I'm going to get photos done, I really do not know. Because I want to rearrange this room around because what you can't see on the opposite side of the camera is there's two knitting machines. And I really want to take those upstairs out of the way so that I can put these chairs on the other side 
and then have this wall blank so I can take photographs. Um, that's my wishful thinking anyway. <laughs> so I can use the mannequin or I can use the, the, the dummy. Um, I can use whatever. And I've also got a tall table there with it's got the flowers on, which I can use for taking photographs of hats and things. So I've got it all planned in my head. It's just finding time and things. I need a secretary <laughs> who works for free, of course. And um, I need a photographer who also works for free, of course. And um, but apart from that, you know, I'm doing fine. <laughs> And I still want a craft shop in Manchester, a craft emporium or whatever you want to call it. A cooperative. I still want one of those. But I've put feelers out everywhere and nobody took any notice of me. So, and I really can't do it myself, as I say. My, my paint patch is useless. Um, I've got to put another one on at five o'clock today, because that's when I put the first one on. Um, but I'm not holding any hopes out because so far my back has been absolutely murdering me. So, and I'm not supposed to take my painkillers while I've got the patch on. So, somebody did say I could take some paracetamol. So, we'll see how we go with that. Hmm. Yes. Anyway, short and sweet, more to the point. <laughs> I'm going to go now and do some more crocheting on my sister in law's sweater. Because I want to get that out of the way and to make something else for the shop. But really, I should be taking photographs. I'm great at the crochet. Not as quick as Kelly. She's a little demon when she gets going with her crochet. But uh, in the meantime, if you want to, to you know, inquire about this, just send me a message. And um, either myself or Kelly can do them in different colours. You know, whichever way round it is. Whoever's not got anything on the hook at the time, <laughs> we can uh, do them. And uh, if you look at Kelly's video of the tutorial that she made for the jacket, she can do those in different colours as well. Um, so, you know, please take a look, you know. <laughs> we don't promote, we'll never get known. And, um, you know, like I say, Kelly's got a lot of work to do in her house. So, you know, a few sales would come in very handy. Anyway, on that note, I really am going. So, I shall say bye for now. Bye all. Have a nice day. Happy crochet. Happy knitting. Bye now.